I am a self-described truth seeker and a generally optimistic, hopeful person. I try to look for ways to solve problems instead of using all of that energy to complain about them. Yes, I do grunt and groan and have been known to yell out loud myself when driving in the mean streets and freeways of Los Angeles. But there's nothing I can do about the traffic, and so I must accept it. After all, this is a part of living in the rat race. Now, there's another type of race, one that seems to rear its ugly head more and more each day. And I'm referring to the classification of human race into various categories. Within this historical continuum lies the story of Rachel Dolezal, the Spokane, Washington, NAACP activist and professor who, in June 2015, was outed as a white woman living as black. Her soon-to-be published memoir, In Full Color, Finding My Place in a Black and White World, is likely to open an enduring conversation about race in America, spur a diversity of opinions, and result in an escalation of raw human emotion. Sadly, the popular discourse surrounding this story will inevitably overshadow a critical and intellectual look at the significance of what has been brought to the light to examine. Forget sensationalism. I want to understand more deeply just what this re-emerging story really says about race. Like it or not, the problems of race affect each and every one of us and its pervasive role in human identity politics cannot be denied. From Dolezal's story emerges the idea of whether or not racial identity is an actual feeling or sensation. Like, I feel like a black person or I feel like an Asian person. Uh, furthermore, if someone truly feels like their particular race, does this provide some evidence of its impact on our biological makeup? If this is true, then racial identity might reside in the brain and subsequently manifest itself into our neural pathways. The brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life is called neuroplasticity. If identity truly resides in the brain, a physical organ, then one could conclude that racial identity is potentially changeable. This idea, however, is unfeasible simply because race is not the result of a chemical reaction, but instead exists in our social environment. Truthfully speaking, people created race, and therefore the reality of racial identity lies in the behavioral expectations placed upon us by other people and by ourselves and not a result of biology. What we consciously and unconsciously think about race as a result of our upbringing, social environment, and education brings racial identity into existence. Furthermore, racial identity itself is an accumulation of our totality of our experience in a highly racialized society. While I completely understand the fluid nature of identity, I still find it much more complex than we choose to admit and so emotionally charged that people become highly passionate about it and sometimes refuse to think logically about it. While it may be arguably possible to transcend the social accepted ideas of race, we cannot control the perception that people have about us based on the race of which they classify us. So then, is race a permanent feature of who we are, or can we consciously change our race? The idea of changing your racial identity can cause more harm than good, even if it's done for the advancement and progress of humankind. Why, you ask? Because when you do this, you are, in fact, validating the racial system that has itself been deemed as scientifically illogical. Reshuffling the cards from the deck of race will not solve the destruction that race has caused humanity. And I believe that most people would agree. Action fueled by optimism is the true panacea. 
where true hope for humanity lies in both our public acknowledgement that racism still exists and our active efforts towards solving the insurmountable social problems it has caused. The race that we should be most concerned with is a collective, coordinated movement towards a more complex understanding and subsequent dismantling of racism. Until then, we must learn what we can from people like Dolezal, who are willing to demonstrate the impact that race has had on their lives. Regardless of our personal opinions of her motives, her story provides a platform for which we can have continued, constructive dialogues about race. Only then can we win this race.